Ons geselds vanavond oor bevolkingsaanwas en ongelijkheid. Nancy, before the break, you mentioned demographic bomb, the phrase demographic bomb. Could you give me examples of that in Africa, countries that you visited? Well, there is one that is quite interesting. It's Nigeria with a, a, a big economic development and a very, very rapid population growth. So this is kind of dangerous because they are really, really uh, continuing to develop very rapidly population wise. Now we have other countries where the economy didn't do so good. Uh, and it's going to be Algeria, for instance, where the economy remains stable and with a very rapid population growth. On the other hand, more towards Eastern Africa, East Africa, Rwanda, Kenya, Burundi, they have managed through very good industrial policy to manage this population growth. That was still rapid, but now that it's going down a little bit, but to provide indeed an economic, um, um, how can I say? And, and To close the gap. Yes, that, yeah. that a spur. Yeah. yeah. So, Andres, if you say industrial policy, like Nancy just mentioned, um, in other words, economic growth doesn't necessarily equal equality. Um, it can actually open the gap more. So, if you talk about an industrial policy that that needs to close the gap, can you give me an example of that in South Africa? Um, uh, she, uh, uh, Nancy mentioned Rwanda, which is uh, a lot of people mention. It's, it's quite an authoritarian state, mm. but mm. intervention is in the economy. And what's interesting about Rwanda is they targeted agriculture and tourism. Mm. And that is, and, and they created through targeting agriculture and tourism, they created the kind of jobs that their population could uh, recover from the trauma mm. of, of, of the genocide. Um, it happened under a very authoritarian government, which, which is problematic in the long run. It, uh, it may give the country, but but I think we, we we can learn something from that in the in the South African case that we we need to be looking at the the, the kinds of people who are unemployed, and 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 I think the times we need to target high tech. Mm. We need to upgrade our auto factories. You know the Mercedes Benz factory in East London needs to keep up with the best of the world. But that also means we need the best of robotics, mm. and that maybe means we won't have so many jobs in a sector like that. So we need to be looking where people are, mm. and and that is that is uh, 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 as Ashwell mentioned, that's agriculture, construction, those those, those kinds of sectors that that we need to, need to be thinking of. And I think the Treasury document ma mentions that, but the National Development Plan is also very much much mm. um, in, in uh, thinking along those lines. Mm. And the idea is not that you've got this massive intervention at state that does everything, but it's a state that kind of provides the kind of infrastructure and incentives for the private sector to grow in those areas. And on that front, we need to sort out the issue of land when it comes to agriculture. Yeah, that yeah. we move beyond those debates, yeah. address them seriously, mm. but that our agriculture can uh, can get onto a growth bar. Mm. So, so mechanization doesn't mean that we're not looking after jobs. If we can just sort of equalize the different um, sectors, for instance, land and then mechanization. And then give me examples of these sectors, Ashwell. Just broaden some more of that. If we look at this neat um, group, for instance, the 3.3 million, how can we make sure that they fall into these sectors? Is it possible? I mean, what, what's clear, you need to provide jobs for people that's not necessarily skilled, not necessarily educated. So you need to look at uh, agriculture. Um, agriculture at the moment is below 3% of the economy but they're punching way above their, their mm. weight in terms of providing jobs. And then you've got the additional jobs that gets provided uh, from, from around agriculture. So, so, so that is something you need to look at. Construction, for example. Mm. Construction is an industry. Uh, mining, for example. So those are the, 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 the industrial sectors where you need to look at, and those could accommodate the type of uh, unemployed people we've got in South Africa. So we're talking about documents. Do we still believe that these policies can be implemented? Yes, most definitely. I mean, uh, I, I mean, you need to, from Statsa's point of view, I mean, we don't look at the implementation of policy mm. Mm. or make policy pronouncements for, 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 for that sake. But what we keep doing is measuring independently so that we make sure that we can track what's happening with the implementation of different policies. Mm. Mm. Would you also like to comment on policy certainty, Andres? 
Kabos, I think we need to mention that we, we're in a very negative moment at the moment mm. in South Africa. A lot of people are despairing. But if you look, look objectively at the statistics, we've actually achieved a, a, a quite a lot in lifting a substantial proportion of our, proportion, uh, of our population out of poverty. We've had massive successes. Uh, we've maintained a strong formal labor market. We've not created all the jobs we wanted to create. Mm. Um, we've got a lot of inequality in the labor market. But um, the, uh, the ex expanded public works programs have done a lot to reduce poverty. People in cities often don't see that. But there in the rural areas where I come from, it, it has a massive impact on, in, in people's lives. Um, I think we also in a moment, if you look at the Treasury's document, it talks about a capable state. Mm. I think there's a realization that we have a lot of weaknesses in many of our government departments. And there's a, 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 there's a need to revisit how we organize our state and, 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 and what, what the state actually does in the economy. And I, I think the, the current policy proposals are more realistic mm. uh, uh, in that sense. So I've sort of, I've, I've got a bit of optimism on that front. You're also quite optimist, optimistic about grants. I, I mean, there's an interesting debate uh, about a, a basic income grant, which isn't happening in South Africa primarily, interestingly enough. And that is uh, much of the debates around the impact of technology and the fourth industrial revolution mm, mm. on work. And so people who are punting the grant are people like Elon Musk and Bill Gates, the people who are developing the technology that will put people out of work. Mm. They're saying that we have to understand that economies in the future, the formal economy, won't necessarily be the place where people will find jobs. So we will have to find new new activities for them. And, and, and one would be a grant, another would be what people call, call an employment guarantee scheme. If you can't find a job, uh, the, the state should be able to provide you with something to do, like the expanded public works programs. Uh, m the town where I live, Alice, is cleaned every morning by people who are on these programs. Instead of just getting a welfare payment, they are doing socially useful work mm. in exchange for support by the government. Um, and so th those are the kinds of jobs that machines will never do, mm. caring for older people, caring for children. Uh, and, and those are the kinds of jobs we should also be expanding when we look at long-term economic policy. Yeah, I'm very glad you mentioned Alice. It's a very good example. Blijf in gesels net in al verder.